Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel, and today I'll be reading a Malta character listener by me. So let's get into it. Kakushibu Kakushibu was very firm about boundaries when it came to his own, and as he is very protective of you. So of course, there are boundaries and anyone trying to cross them, that would get him really angry. And although you are wearing a shorter skirt than usual, he never really saw something wrong with it, and never really expected the whole situation to arise because of that. But it seemed to be very wrong. Most of the time he was not even bothered about what others were wearing. So he could not believe someone could be so focused on what you were wearing. And a few moments later, with the two of you walking down, he saw some. Just what do you think you're doing? He said. And the rage was barely concealed was that his voice. And you looked back to see him. And you had no idea what was happening. You put an arm around him, trying to pull him away from the guy that was now on the floor. Kakushibu, come on. What's going on with you? You don't know, Wayan. Let me deal with him. Deal with what? What are you talking about? You say, finding him completely incredulous. Hakshiba scowled at him as the guy gets up, and he seemed to be a little bit nervous. Would you tell me what happened, Kakshibu? And why you just punched that man? He was looking up your skirt, Wayan. And you feel a little bit disgusted. What a vile individual. You couldn't really say anything about that, as you watched Kakshiba take him away. And the sound of shouting and yelling from the man... And some begging as well. Seemed to be a lot going on. And if you were to be honest, you really didn't care. When Kakshibu got back, he wrapped an arm around you and kissed your forehead. Everything will be okay, Wayan. Nothing for you to worry about. I've got this. Do you still want to go to the store? Yeah, I do. And thank you, Kakshibu. I really appreciate it. Thank you for being with me. It's nothing to thank me for, my own. It's the least I should do. Mitro. Mitro was usually... Well, he was the one who was his head in the clouds, not really focusing on his surroundings or what's going on around him. And it was really unusual for him to notice something when he was not really in the mood, zoning out and looking at the clouds above. But, he just happened to be more aware of his surroundings around you. Maybe it was his own protectiveness, or the way he could worry about you no matter what. But, he just could not let himself lose himself in the moment. And that was why, he was very aware of what was happening. Unlike you, as he looked around at the dresses that you wanted to buy, showing them off to him, as he looked at you with a happy smile. And he swore you only tried to blink for a second before he saw someone looking at you weirdly. He tried to ignore it, but then, when the man bent down to look up your skirt, he hurried towards him and pushed him away roughly. What were you trying to do? He turned around to see what Mitra was talking about, but he's already dragging the man away, and you have no idea what to do except wait for him to come back. And you do hear some shouting, and then you peek around to see Mitra punching him, whispering something in his ear that makes the man go pale, and he immediately runs off once Mitra lets him go. Mitra, what happened? And what were you doing to that poor man? It's nothing for you to worry about, my own. Come on. And I promise you, He's not some poor man you've got to worry about. He's a nasty person, and I dealt with him. Are you sure? Pretty sure. No, come on. Where was that red dress that you were trying on? I've got it. Okay. I'll be waiting for you to change. Take your time. He was really angry about what that man tried. But he was not going to let any of what happened ruin your day. 
especially since you seemed so happy and excited, and you could not ruin that for you. Sonami. Sonami could be very angry when one of those things that happen that are not really supposed to happen in public do, and they're out of order completely. He never really thought someone would have the guts to do this, but apparently, someone had the guts and no brain to actually think it through, because that guy had just decided to, in broad daylight, bend down and try and look up your skirt. He was reaching out to hold the fabric of it and lift it up when Sanami noticed and immediately kicked him in the face. What are you doing, you bastard? He shouted, lifting him up from the ground where he fell by the collar, holding him up in the air. You could only turn around and look at the scene before you. Just looking at what was happening, surely something must have happened for Sanami to act this way, as he was not really insane or crazy, but you have no idea what it is, and you really hope he doesn't take it too far. Sanami, if it's nothing serious, Please, just don't argue. It was serious, Ryan. That guy is a pervert. And I'm going to teach him a lesson. You were quite stunned at what he was saying. And you could not really say anything because you could not really defend a pervert. And you felt a little bit violated. But you knew that Sonami had come just in time to protect you. And as you saw him hit the guy and yell at him... You couldn't really have it in you to feel bad. Perverted people deserve no sympathy, especially not yours. So, as you left them on the ground, the people watching, he went over to you and wrapped an arm around your waist, leaning down to press a soft kiss to your cheek. Don't mind him, darling. Let's go on about our day. If you say so, Sonami. And as you walked away a little bit further, you finally let out a breath you didn't know you were holding. And then you tiptoed, kissing his cheek, and watching as you have to closer. You really couldn't feel safe anywhere else but in his arms. And you knew that he'd always keep you in there if you could. Gita Mioka. Giyu had his own sixth sense, as he so called it. And he knew something was up with another guy that was looking at you. He just knew it. Was it logical to feel this way about certain random people he didn't know? Not at all. Did everything have to be logical to be true? He does not suppose so. Because, most of the time, his instincts proved to be right and there was no reason to doubt them, really. So as he went on about your day, and he went on while making sure nobody was trying to bother you. He couldn't help but notice the way that the guy kept sneaking glances at your body. But as you called him over to do something, he just had to shake it off and go bring that something you called for. But as he turned around, he saw the guy walking towards you and bending down, trying to lift up your skirt to look up it. And then... Immediately, faster than light itself, he had gone over to him and hit him harshly, harshly enough that he fell onto the floor. Get out of here, unless you want to be gone, he said, and he was seething with anger. You could tell that he was upset and rage about what he was trying to do. He hadn't really felt a thing, but... He knew whatever Rikiyu was talking about must have happened, and you couldn't doubt him, especially with the way the guy looked very guilty. As Giyu served him another punch before shooing him away, he went over to your side, looking over you. Are you alright? I am. I mean, I didn't really realize what was happening until you came. Thank you, Giyu. You don't have to thank me. I'm here for you, Ayan. Always. It's my job to protect you. Alright? 
You need to know that. I know. I love you. And I love you too. Now come on. Let's get back to what we were doing.